This is Fisher Flying Products. I'm Dave Hertner. Welcome to the nest. Please take the time to hit the subscribe button and click on the bell so you get notified when we post new videos. Hello everyone and welcome to The Nest, our weekly video log of all things related to Fisher Flying Products. I'll begin today by saying that we have conquered our technical challenges. We now have video that is synced with audio and it hopefully is a good quality. Uh, we've gone through a huge learning curve from the equipment end of things to try to get a good video log out to you. So I hope you enjoy. I'd like to begin today as well by extending a warm welcome to our latest kit customer. Angel Bartolome from, from Chile has just placed an order for a celebrity kit. He intends to install a Continental C90 with a wooden prop on this airplane. So welcome Angel and we look forward to working with you. Uh, lastly, I have a 10 question message to send out to anyone who would like to do a virtual video interview. Um, if we've got 10 questions that you can review, uh, take your time, put them on, down on pieces of paper, and then have your you know, grandkids or your wife or your significant other video your, uh, your answers in front of your project. Let's show everybody what we're building. Let's share with everyone um, our triumphs and our difficulties, um, and let's get, uh, let's get more video content and, and I can bring it together. I'll mix it together with my, with the questions and try to put together a good product for our newsletters. Today we're going to talk, uh, I'm going to have, uh, Diedrich Sorensen talk more about his wood selection process and he used ash in the rebuild of his FP202 and he has um, gone through a process, um, something that anyone can do in their own backyard kind of thing. He set up his own test rig and, and things like this to, to record samples of the wood that he's using and to also determine which was the strongest wood that he could use um, in his aircraft uh, as Sitka is becoming much more difficult to find and much more expensive. Uh, we're going through the same process with a bunch of different types of woods, Poplar and Sitka and uh, Douglas fir, to try to come up with the best product for the least price um, that will replace uh, Sitka moving forward. So we're going to be changing over the woods that we're using in our kits as well. Um, on top of that, I also have uh, a report done by a fellow named, uh, an engineer named Robert Hines out west. Uh, he did some testing of various different woods against Sitka as well using a different test method. And I think this is the te test method that we're looking at trying to utilize in, in doing our testing. He did a very thorough report, so I'm going to review that report with you as well. So um, I hope you enjoy and I'm going to let uh, Diedrich take, uh, take it from here. In this video, I'm going to be comparing the strength of white ash with Sitka spruce. While restoring this FP202, I noticed that my Sitka spruce was extremely weak, so I started off testing its specific gravity, and it was significantly below the minimum, which is 0.36. I would recommend doing a specific gravity test on every stick of lumber that you get. It doesn't use very much and it verifies that, your, that, you, that you don't have a lot of lignin in the lumber and that the uh, fibers are tightly woven. And all of that is really high relative to its specific um, species. Now over here, I've got a lot of data. I'm going to try to just come in on that. And if you want to pause it and read some of that data for each of the selections, uh, the control is Sitka Spruce, which is on the far right. Next one, uh, the one to the far left is Pennsylvania Ash. Common Ash is next from Missouri, from Wooden Aviation. And then next to the Sitka, is the select ash from Missouri. To test your specific gravity, cut square pieces of wood and then cut the length exactly 10 times its width. Then you mark it off in 10 equal lengths. And this here is a piece of Sitka. It's select. 
its minimum specific gravity is 0.36, which I put a heavy line on it for 0.36, and 0.4 is its average. You drop it in distilled water. You don't drop it. You set it and then release it when you're close to the minimum. Okay, that's five and a half. That's what I got, 0.55. That's what I got last time. The select ash, and ash is quite high in specific gravity. And the ash should be five, six minimum, and it's six, eight for the select. And that's from Missouri, from Wooden Aviation. And this is also from Wooden Aviation. They sent me samples of their white ash. And this is common white ash. It's six point, it's right at average, 6.2, 0.62. This here is from Pennsylvania. This here is select also. It's about 14 growth rings per inch. And we'll see what it is. It's 7.2. And you can see I've already marked them because I've already tested them. But it was a few days ago, so they dried out, and they retested exactly the same. Now, because aircraft are designed and plans are drawn relative to Sitka spruce as the uh, structural, main structural wood, all except for wooden aviation, they build all of theirs out of ash, uh, you have to reduce the size of the white ash to match the weight of the Sitka spruce. These have all been cut down to match the exact same weight and they all, all of the ash weighs less than the Sitka spruce. Slightly, but a little bit less. And now we can test them at the same weight. Before testing the wood though, I want to go over one thing. If you notice the uh, Pennsylvania ash needs to be reduced to 75 percent and of Sitka spruce and then the common ash from wooden aviation needs to be reduced 87 and a half percent and the select ash from wooden aviation needs to be reduced 77.7 percent .7%. now when you reduce this you don't go both directions, and I thought this would be common, but I talked to a cabinet maker friend of mine, and I said if you wanted to reduce the size in half, what would you do? And he said, well, you cut it in half both ways. Um, no, you cut it in half both ways, and now you've got one-fourth. So what you do is you create a constant by finding the area and once you find the area and let's see where did I put the area right there's the area they're all within 1.159 square inches to 0.166 that's the Sitka spruce these are 1.167 0.162 is this square area so you figure out the square area and then you multiply it by 75% and then square root it. And that gives you a constant for 75%, it would be 0 0.86, 87.5% would be 0.93. And the sizes on these are 402 thousandths on the average, very close to that. And that would make the Pennsylvania ash needs to be 352 thousandths square and it is and 381 thousandths for the common ash from wooden aviation and the select ash would be 359 thousandths per side and of course the Sitka would be left the same and it's at 407 thousandths all of these have been reduced to match the weight or be under slightly the weight of the Sitka spruce and there's not a whole lot of difference noticeable difference 
and now we're going to test them against the Sitka spruce. So, in conclusion, the Select Sitka Spruce snapped at a three inch drop of a six pound, six and a half pound weight. The common ash from Wooden Aviation out of Missouri, it is reduced to 87% the size of the Sitka Spruce and it snapped at four inches and I shouldn't say it snapped it's still very strong I can't even get it to budge whereas the Sitka snapped right off the select ash from wooden aviation it's reduced to 77 percent of the size of the select ash or Sitka spruce and at a five inch drop it cracked right there and you can hardly push on it I lost that footage so I did it again and I don't know but what some of the fracture made it crack quicker but or crack more it still didn't crack until five inches but while I was playing with it it broke right off but the initial crack was five inches and it's still extremely sturdy. Now the Pennsylvania um, select ash, it is reduced to three quarters or 75 percent the size of the Sitka and at six inches it cracked but it didn't crack much and it's got a very high specific gravity so and it's not going to budge and that was at six inches now by no means is this a single test I've done these tests many many times I already knew what was going to happen and actually you could elevate the results because this particular selection of Sitka spruce is extremely strong it has a very high specific gravity so the results typically are more in favor of the ash. The other test that I did not put on here is sliding a weight out the length of a selection and I gave up on that because the Sitka spruce would snap at about 12 inches. The same weight I could take it out 24 inches or more and uh, it would just hang there on the ash so why would you use anything else I came across this article as well by Robert Haynes uh, an engineer that uh, has done uh, a very good report on the um, uh, the testing of Sitka spruce alternatives uh, I will post the link to this full report uh, below and uh, you can go and read it in detail and I'm not going to go through the whole thing today but I just want to scroll down uh, he did a very good job of you know in the introduction and uh, you know it's a proper proper report um, takes his situation um, he tests uh, Sitka spruce yellow poplar white pine and ponderosa pine and uh, so there's some different species as compared to Diedrich's testing here and as well, um, he did a three-piece test for each one, and he did it in a little bit different. He did a, um, a span test 
uh, with kitty litter in, in a bucket and he poured it in at a very f- quick rate so that, that you get a good um, a, a good ramp up to the weight building on the piece of wood um, but he did not um, impact the wood like in Diedrich's uh, case and uh, this is a very interesting article and he comes up with some good uh, summary points on it so again I'll post the link uh, below if you want to go have a look at it uh, but the in the summary he basically says that white pine in this case is um, the best one although he didn't test Douglas fir uh, and he regrets that uh, we're going to do the testing of the Douglas fir uh, using the same methodology uh, as I've got some uh, in the shop so uh, all told we're going to be going through a bunch of different species of wood here that are going to be tested and uh, we'll come up with a a good conclusion on what to what to use in our kits moving forward so i hopefully uh, this is all helpful and i'd like to let you know that we've gone live with the sale of our construction videos on the website uh, there's a tab on the side as well as a link along the top toolbar for uh, going to the uh, web store you can purchase them online now so Thank you for uh, listening. This has been a little bit longer one, but and maybe a little more technical, but uh, I think a lot of people are interested uh, in the wood species and how they relate to each other with regards to strength. Thanks again for watching. We try hard to bring you interesting content each week. To help us out, please like and share our videos. And to receive the latest info from Fisher Flying Products, click the subscribe button and ring the bell. See you next time from the nest.